You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another very exciting episode of Ask a Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and yes, we are certainly excited to be here with you. And as always, thank you very much for spending a few minutes of your day with us. Uh, we're looking forward to this show, and we know that there are a lot of listeners around the world, which is so cool. We love talking to all of you, and I think this is going to talk directly to you guys. Yeah, if you are an expat to the United States, you're going to love this show as we are going to discuss uh, how can you fly as a foreign national or foreign person in the United States? What about commercial law? Uh, what about hobbyist or recreational law? Uh, well, you may find that the recreational limitations are so strict that you may not even want to deal with it and just go to part 107. But before we play today's question, today's podcast is brought to you by our friends at Skywatch. If you need aviation insurance for your drone on demand, you got to check out skywatch.ai. It's a friendly application that you can download on your phone and get instantaneous aviation insurance to protect your bird. Now, if you heard the news recently, then you know that as a flight mastery graduate, yes, that's Droney's flagship operational training. If you're a graduate of flight mastery, then you get educational rates for your insurance that covers liability and whole. Don't forget, that discount is actually stackable so you can get even more money off of your policy. Now, if that's a training that pays itself off, well, then I would call that an investment. So if you want to check out Flight Mastery, just go to DroneU.Education, check out in-person training. And also, if you want to check out Skywatch, just go to skywatch.ai. For all of our Flight Mastery graduates, if you're hearing this for the first time, we are notifying all Flight Mastery graduates next week of your discount. You must have passed the test at the end of the Flight Mastery class, which if you don't remember, was that pesky obstacle course. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's pesky hear, and fun. Let's hear that question. Hey, fellas. This is Paul calling from Calgary, Canada. I'm a longtime listener and a first time caller, listening since back in the 333 days. I have a question for you guys about foreign operators. Canada just rolled out new drone or RPAS regulations requiring drone pilots pass a test to fly legally. It's just an online test, which is pretty convenient. However, only Canadian citizens or permanent residents can obtain a license in Canada. Non citizens are required to apply for an SFOC. Not the old one. It's a new one with only two pages. And applicants must have the equivalent of a license in their home country. My question is, how do foreign operators obtain permission to fly in the U.S.? Is a drone license from another country valid, like some driver's licenses would be? If not, are Part 107 licenses available to foreign operators or only U.S. citizens? I look forward to your response. You guys are always helpful and provide so much good information to the community. Thanks. Thank you, Paul, very much. Appreciate it. Um, a lot of changes in this arena, it seems like. <sighs> and uh, it seems like, just like a lot of things, the FAA starting to kind of tighten things up with all things drone industry. This is no exception. That's actually a very good point. Because if you guys remember, Canada used to be quite open. Their skies were quite open. And they have kind of changed things a around a bit. Uh, a. Now, the <laughs> fact that they added a, the whole you can be a foreign um, operator to Canada uh, as long as you have, like, let's say you're part 107, but you can only fly in class G, I think that's actually really cool. The fact that they made the SFOC only two pages down from 10, 15, or 20, or whatever it was that was ridiculous is uh, awesome as well. But when it comes to flying your drone in the United States, as a foreign operator, well, what can you do? Um, first off, you have to understand 
whether you're coming here to fly for fun or for commercial purposes. Now, that may seem like a very simple question, uh, but there are a lot of limitations and exclusions as a recreational pilot that you'll have to comply with. For example, you cannot fly in any controlled airspace whatsoever. So if you're traveling to an American city, chances are there is airspace that is right over that city that you will not be able to fly in. In fact, I would say with a large degree of confidence, if you're coming to the United States from a foreign country and you're even making YouTube videos of the United States, that would actually be a commercial purpose and you would need your part 107. But me telling you that doesn't mean you're going to want to get your 107. Me telling you that you can't fly in most controlled airspace as a recreational pilot will probably incentivize you to get a part 107 because it opens the skies through multiple forms of workflow, like the Lance system for part 107 pilots. So really quick, Rob, help me understand, if you're a foreign national, can you get a part 107 certificate to fly? Uh, yeah, I believe you can um, with some uh, qualifications and you're going to have to come to the United States, right? Um, is my understanding because you're going to have to test here in the States? You are going to have to test here in the United States, which does make it a little bit expensive, but you mm -hmm. can prepare. You can take our Part 107 exam online, mm -hmm. have everything ready to go and apply for certain things that you will need to get your Part 107 license as a foreign operator. In fact, the FAA just put this on their website, and frankly, I think it's awesome. They say that the first step is defining whether you need a Part 107 or you're going to fly under the recreational rules. And Rob, I know you have the recreational rules pulled up in front of you. So would you mind just helping us understand just a couple quick rules of the recreational flight? No, not at all. Actually, um, short of what you went into, I think it's relatively straightforward and there are some things that you have to follow once you've decided that you are only going to fly for recreational purposes once coming into the States. But um, you got to register your drone. Anybody who flies a drone here, of course, within the confines of what is required to be registered, which is probably what most of you would be flying here. Otherwise, why would we be having the conversation? Um, you can only fly recreationally. You've got to follow all the safety guidelines of a community-based organization, which is the what? what That's like AMA. Is that? So if you're flying yep. at like an AMA field, you would mm -hmm. actually have to be an AMA, AMA member, and you would have to follow all of their rules. But mm -hmm. this would not. I believe this would not apply to you if you were flying outside of controlled airspace at your, at like let's say if you owned a house here. You just need to be able to. You need to know what those guidelines are and fly according to them. Of course, fly under 400 feet in Class G space, uncontrolled airspace. So you absolutely cannot fly in controlled airspace. Got to keep your drone within line of sight. And, of course, don't fly in any airspace um, where flight is prohibited for any reason. A lot of reasons that those restrictions come up at any given time. And, uh, yeah, that's really about it. So, um, all in all, I think it's pretty straightforward for those of you that want to come and just fly and, and have a good time and maybe grab some pictures and so forth. Yeah, again, you know, you're not going to be able to fly in a lot of spaces and you're going to have to get permission to fly in those areas, which if you're not familiar with can be daunting, um, let alone there, I, I'm just going to say this. Like, if you're hearing this for the first time and you've never listened to us before, I'm telling you as a friend, if you're coming here as a foreign operator, just get your Part 107 license. The test is not hard. We and a lot of other people have ample material on Part 107. If anyone ever says that they were, they've were they been doing it first, that's a flat lie, though. We can actually prove that we were the first to offer a study guide. But that being said... It, it, it's not hard to pass the test. It's so much easier to work within the workflow of part 107. And frankly, you can do more. And if you want the best review videos or YouTube videos or travel videos or whatever, when you want to fly in the right spots, close to stuff, close to cool stuff. So anyway, if you decide that you're like, yes, Paul, I want to get my part 107 license because, well, I just want to fly within the rules of the United States. I mean, you understand, uh, the United States can be strict about things. So that being said, if you are flying your drone for commercial purposes, you will need to obtain what's called an economic authority. So an operator of a foreign civil aircraft must hold a foreign aircraft permit issued by the Department of Transportation and comply with applicable FAA requirements before engaging in any commercial air operations in the U.S., 
More information can be found under Part 375. So if your UAS or drone is registered in your home country, all you have to do is submit an application to a foreign aircraft permit in the United States. That's what we're calling it is a foreign aircraft permit at least 15 days in advance of the proposed start date of the operation. Just know that at times it can take up to 30 days to obtain a foreign aircraft permit. So if your home country does not require a UAS or a drone registration, contact the DOT Foreign Air Carrier Licensing Division for further information about completing an application. Now, here's the thing. If you're a Canadian or a Mexican national, the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement or the USMCA, formerly known as NAFTA, authorizes certain agricultural or industrial operations commonly referred to as specialty air services. DOT has granted a blanket foreign aircraft permit for SAS or specialty air services operations explicitly covered by NAFTA. This permit is applicable to both manned and UAS or drone operations. Under the terms of this permit, you do not need to file applications with DOT for economic authority to conduct SAS operations for which coverage has become effective under NAFTA. We recommend that you review the DOT NAFTA SAS information packet, which I'm pulling up right now, to determine whether your proposed operation meets these conditions. Other types of operations not explicitly covered by NAFTA will likely require a foreign aircraft permit. Please contact the Office of the Secretary of Transportation, the Office of In International Aviation for clarification. That phone number is obviously if you're making a phone call in the United States, you don't need to do this, but for everyone else, it's plus one, and then 202-366-2405. If, I, ooh, I went to that document, I clicked the DOT NAFTA SAS information packet, and I got a 404 error. Mm, same with that 375 link in here. Really? Mm-hmm. Government websites. Yeah. Come on, guys. Interesting. Don't you want we people should let to them know? know? We should let them know that that's an issue. Yeah. Maybe they'll hear this and uh, and get that fixed. Yeah. Interesting. So if you do fly under part 107 and you do get the, your economic authority or your foreign, um, excuse me, the foreign aircraft permit, which is your economic authority, then you'll need to get your part 107 license by taking uh, the FAA's part 107 certificate test, which can be found at a CATS center. Just go to catstest.com. That's C-A-T-S-T-E-S-T.com to find a local testing center near you. Whew. <laughs> so a couple things. Then to, you need to get it registered. Okay, I said it. That's right. Yeah, a couple things. So to clarify, oh the U.S. does God. not recognize any other country's certificate, mm. certificates, licenses, no. et cetera, right? But one thing that does jump out to me here is that, and it's, uh, it's right there, is that if you've got a friend who has their Part 107, you can go fly with them, and they would be your remote pilot in command as long as they are there with you and have the ability to take over direct control of the flight if something were to go awry. That means they're standing distance from you and they can take the remote without you saying a word. That's right. Almost like you're uh, jumping out of an airplane together. Mm -hmm. So then I should say, Rob, you have the controls. And that's when you, that's when you say, I have the controls. And that's when I say, you have the controls. Okay. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of like a repelling belay on and all that good stuff. <laughs> You're a team. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, long and the short of it is, is that as a foreign operator, you can operate here in the United States. If you are flying under the recreational rules, you will have difficulty flying in controlled airspace. You can get access to controlled airspace through the Lance system. But again, it's so very clear that th there's not a lot of recreational operations that really fall under recreational because, you know, if if you're doing anything that's, you know, I go back to this whole furtherance of a business and the FAA stopped using that and then they used it again and they stopped using it. I'm not sure if we're, we're using it, the, the term or not. I'm using the term because it's very clear to me when you say the furtherance of a business that actually paints a very clear picture in my mind of like, are you operating sure. for money or not, period? You know what I mean? If you're uploading to YouTube, you're doing it for money. At or least. For to help somebody else make money. True. Or further their business. True. Et cetera, right? True. So. 
That yeah. being said, I say what our recommendation would be as a foreign operator, and you don't uh, fall under the NAFTA rules as a Canadian or a Mexican national, then I would go ahead and just you know get the operational authority from the Department of Transportation. And again, that is the... Uh, foreign aircraft permit that you will need and then you'll fly under part 107 and then you get your license and voila you can fly drones here in the United States now quick little switch tracking here did you hear in this question how he talks about as a United States pilot mm -hmm. you can fly in Canada as long as it's class G hmm. that's awesome it's that simple. Canada, here we come. As long as you're, you have a Part 107 in the U.S.? So I don't know if it's really that simple. I'm pretty sure you still have to like file on Transport Canada's website. We've asked Transport Canada to come on the show. We are waiting to hear back from them. Hopefully they will come on the show and explain this to us just so clearly. But don't forget, if you're operating drones here in the United States, you need a registration number no matter what. Get caught without a registration number, for sure going to get fined. I would recommend everyone to fly under Part 107. You know, the exemptions of Part 107, which is Section 349, which is recreational flight, are very limited in scope, and you could end up getting yourself in trouble very quickly. So I would say as a foreign national, get your Part 107, fly according to the rules. And it was this was interesting, Rob, because... You know, when Haya and I did a podcast interview outside of DJI New York City, nine times out of 10, you know who was buying a drone from them? Foreign national. Foreign national. Hmm. Very interesting. So you're thinking that they just came to the U.S. and they decided, hey, I want to get a drone while I'm here and fly? Or? That's exactly right. Huh. Take well, to the skies. You're in, you're in the States, you know? Very interesting. Birth of aviation. Plus, there are not a lot of drone stores around. I mean, obviously you can go to a Best Buy or something, but True. those DJI stores are not everywhere. So when you run into it in Manhattan, hey, hey when in Rome, buy that drone or whatever. <laughs> when in Rome, buy that drone. <laughs> <laughs> Rhymes uh, enough. Yeah, it does. Well, hopefully we we did a good job at answering this question. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. If you are a foreign national, you can take our part 107 study guide material. It's 47 bucks a month. You also get access to our Don't Crash course and operations course. I would recommend that as well because here at Drone U, we're not just about part 107 because we know in order to create a successful business just passing the exam ain't gonna cut it that's right on that bombshell that's gonna do it for us today my name is paul my name's rob drone you dot education 